Oh, hello, I didn't see you there. It seems that you've caught me playing with thyself. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, or whatever time zone it is, wherever you in the world, it is your law and saviour, and welcome to the Playing With Thyself podcast, where this sad British goth boy plays TTRPGs by himself. And if you can hear the grin as I say that, it's because I am grinning like a motherfucker in a candy store, because it feels great to be back doing solo stuff that I haven't done since February, and I'm just so pumped and excited I finally have a bit of time to sit down and do this and this might be confusing some of my regular listeners after seeing a recent upload that I did saying hold on you said you're done with actual plays yes but I said I wasn't done with solo stuff and it's the solo stuff that really excites me at the moment because says Billy no mates but anyway you may be looking at the title of this and be even more confused vampire the masquerade but you're fucking seagull what the fuck are you on mate well Earlier this year, there was a very bizarre Twitter thread about various tabletop role-playing games where you could play as seagulls. I know, it, it sounds dumb, and it's Twitter, so it makes lots of sense. And the first one that I saw was this title here, Much That Is Good and All That Is Evil, by Ji Yon Shim Games. I've, if I've mispronounced that, I am dreadfully sorry. But it's a solo journaling game where you play as a seagull and cause havoc to the humans. And you might be thinking, well, where's the vampire connection here? Well, there isn't one. I'm inserting one now. We are a seagull ghoul that's connected to a gangrel because it's it's literally the first clan that I have thought of. But there, there you go. There's the vampire content. If you don't like this, fuck off. But we are going to pretend to be a fucking seagull and cause some havoc. Now, this uses a D6, and I'm actually going to be using a new one, which you can't see. But it's a mix of blues and purples, uh, which as somebody who is bisexual as fuck, who literally uses it in their branding, I thought it was a tad appropriate. And I also have a blue and black one, because I believe there was a point in this where we roll two d6 or rather you roll one twice but whatever i'm gonna spice things up a little bit because you know why not anyway so to start things off we're gonna have some interesting music that's going to play right now and whilst that going on in the background let us go through the objective of this because as i said we're going to be fucking up some humans now the first thing that we have to do is answer a simple question is there such a species as a seagull well, I'm going to say that there is. So, if you've answered yes and you are playing a goal in a major urban center city, Los Angeles to Seattle, pick a city. Well, I'm not going to choose either of those. We're going to go back to the city of season one of the Playing With Thyself podcast, which I actually named the Nameless City because it makes it universal. But just know, from this perspective, it is somewhere in the barely United Kingdom, England, in it. So, with our seagull, we have three stats. The first of which, hungry. The answer is always yes. No need to track points because your hunger knows no satiation. Audacity. How likely you are going to try it. Roll your die, which is a d6. If you get higher than four, roll again. If you get a one, roll again. So we're going to do that now. So we're looking for answers of four, three, or two. Okay, so we got a free. If and there are four boxes in this PDF. I don't have a sheet here. I can wiggle the tablet if you want. There you go. Um, and I've just skipped a load of pages. Huzzah! Right, back on track. There are four boxes which I will just draw in right now in a little notebook. You can probably hear the nice writing noises. Okay, I'm going to write audacity next to it for free. For free, cross out one box with a clear X. Okay. 
there we go and now we go on to our final stat our third and final stat choose one of the following as your third stat they all start with three points so we have grabby how likely you are to make a grab for it beefy how likely you are to use your brawn to solve slash cause problems mean how likely you are to make someone cry now as a mean bastard i'm inclined to choose the third one but as a ghoul seagull that's going to trip me up more than once i'm actually going to say we're going to go for grabby because what is a throat or a jugular than just a large fleshy chip so we are just going to write down or draw down these three boxes and right next to it grabby they all start with three points and on the pdf itself there's an optional in the space below draw your ghoul goal <laughs> draw your goal which i can't do because i'm i can't do that but if this is sounding interesting to you uh, i will leave a link in the description below for you to go and support the author and uh, you can tell them that i sent them their way and hopefully uh, they'll appreciate that if not fair enough now if you don't like this uh, you can happily piss off because i'm not doing this for you i'm doing this for me because i've wanted to do this for ages and um, i know there's some people going to get a bit of a weird buzz out of it so onwards and upwards now we choose the urban goal story path which is what we're doing we are in the nameless city which is now a host to a myriad of seagulls roll your d6 twice to determine setting and scenario so this is why i said that we're going to be using 2d6 also it gives me an opportunity to roll two dice really close to the mic okay so we're going to use the bisexual one for the first option and the blue one for the second one so the first one was a six uh the pier one or four one's historic okay it's not that one two or five okay the playground three or six a large playground with climbing structures swings and other delights for young children and their caretakers oh dear uh this is going to be fantastic so i'm just going to make a note of playground and right next to it fuck them kids and if that's a thing that you don't want coming up in this or it's going to bother you fine fair enough you can not listen to that and i'm not saying that to be nasty horror without consent is trauma and i do not want to be inflicting that sort of thing upon anyone so again not going to have any beef with you if this is too much for you already but anyway it's not going to be overly bloody and gory anyway i don't think i'll probably uh, regret that a few minutes later but just so we know where we're standing with this okay so three or six and the next one was five the small time weed dealer hunkers down on a seesaw and waits for her buyer under the light of a full moon asterisk a foil wrapped nubbin of the super burrito she ate for dinner sticks partially out of her coat pocket hmm okay so in this playground we have someone who's selling some marijuana weed dealer on a sea saw so now we actually come to the action turns now do you have your setting and scenario roll to see which action you take first and against whom if you land on a number matched with a stat you don't take it's a miss without the point expenditure and obviously you roll a d6 and each one matches with the different stats that you have with the exception of six which may or may not happen and to that end we're going to put the blue dice away now uh we do this for five more times for a total of six turns so we do it once and then do it another five totally in six so with that out of the way we have our marijuana deal on a seesaw it is probably uh mid-afternoon let's say as there's probably some kids about just somebody minding their own business maybe probably dusk actually if there's like some fucking dealer sitting on a seesaw or whatever there's probably like, some teenagers hanging about but it's not quite time for the master to rise from this slumber it's, uh, it's you, you get what i'm trying to say here wink wink nudge nudge so anyway a lot of exposition let us roll the fucking d6 we got a free so that takes us to the beefy um option charge at them to wham your whole surprisingly gigantic body right into the side of the head like a wrecking ball roll again but as we do not have beefy we go to the failure option uh which is the top one if i'm interpreting this correctly it's a miss without the point expenditure if you score three or higher 
which we did, you miss and there's no impact, but you have the satisfaction of hearing them shriek in terror. It is a pitch-perfect match for the high note of the peak of the Queen of the Night aria in Mozart's The Magic Flute. I love that. Um, okay, so let's try and work this out. So I'm just going to make a note of that. Crash into dealer. Obviously, uh, Birdface McGee is what we're going to call the seagull now. He's obviously wanting to get a bit of the, you know, sucky sucky, but does so with this... I imagine them being a ghoul, they're going to be quite a bit bulkier, and ghoul animals tend to be a bit more aggressive either. So just flying at the way at the dealer, and just give off this really impressive shriek, shriek um, that's probably going to catch some attention from people nearby. They probably have to get up and move now, maybe to like pretend it was all part of the action or whatever, but then again, if people saw this fucking huge seagull just fly at them suddenly, people are going to like get their phones out where we'll try and take a picture or whatever. Yeah, it's all very strange behaviour stuff, but we don't actually spend any points here because we do not have anything in beefy, so let's roll again. Six. Ooh, now we go all the way to the back. If you roll a six, which has no accompanying stat, choose one of the win conditions from any of the actions above and take it. Spend two points in its respective stat by blacking out two of its stat boxes. And I'm going to choose Audacity, which reads as follows. You approach from behind on the left. Inhale deeply. <sighs> to shriek. Directly into their ear from mere inches away. Now... As we get, I guess, the win condition here, we do not roll again as instructed, which I realised I've made a mistake from the previous beefy option, but you know what? The narrative made sense, so we'll just roll with it, I guess. So anyway, so we're not going to roll again. So the win condition is the bottom paragraph, because there's two, like, free or lower, free or higher, but we're looking for free and lower for the wing stuff. If you score free or lower, your voice pierces the air and their eardrum. They will have chronic tinnitus in that ear from the dying day. Ooh. Late at night, when they're alone, they swear the ringing in their ear sounds like they're screaming at them all over again. Vanquished. Spend one audacity point by blacking out one of the stat boxes. Now, it says here that we take out two, so I'm going to go back to audacity, and that leaves us with... One dot of audacity left, if I've interpreted correctly. Uh, stat depletion. If you deplete one of your stats completely, cross out the stat completely and re-roll to get its number. Okay, so it replenishes. That's how I'm interpreting this. So I'd, I, the reason why I chose this, because partly it was funny, but I imagine that the goal ghoul... The goal ghoul <laughs> uh, saw that as a challenge, returned back and just activated fucking... I don't know what equivalent this would be. Potence were from the land, so to speak. <laughs> and it's just given that twat vank, um, tinnitus. So they've now kind of moved away from this, uh, part, this um, park here. But we're not done here. No, because this is our target here. So we've given the individual tinnitus, which I'm just going to write down. And they're leaving the park. Now, we roll again to see what we land on. We got a two. Uh, grabby. And this is actually one that we have. Wait until they're eating something and snatch it from their hands again. Roll again. Okay, so what would they be getting here? Uh, well... The first thing that springs to mind, given the time of day, I imagine it's like some fucking ice cream um, truck that sort of like drives past. Uh, so something sweet just to soothe the really sour experience that they've had, which makes sense to me. So we're going to roll again. We got a three. So if you score three or lower, cool. You clutch the spoils of battle in your beak and soar in the perfect circle above them as they stand beneath you, mouth agape. You briefly consider taking a shit right into it, but decide against it. Not out of compassion, mercy, or even pity, but because you want to eat their food as soon as you can. As you leave, you hear them start to cry. Victory! Spend one grabby point by blacking out one of the boxes. Right. So... Obviously, this um, ice cream they've had, I'm going to say it's vanilla because it's the first thing that comes to mind. And snatch... I ain't even not, I'm not even going to say it's the ice cream itself. It's just snatching up the cone from their hands and flying off and just letting the actual ice cream just go on the ground. Just mwah, delicious stuff. So this is now our fourth roll. Four, which takes us to audacity again. 
Uh, you approach from behind on the left. Inhale deeply to shriek directly into their ear from near inches away. Roll again. One, free or lower. So we're not. So we're piercing the eardrum again. So we're gonna uh, now expended all of our audacity points. Um, now giving them tinnitus in the other ear. And if we start, if this happens again, we're gonna say that we've actually blinded them. This weed dealer is not having a great day. I'm beginning to think that this is um. Well, obviously this is clearly a personal front. Maybe this weed dealer is like an opposing ghoul of the, the, the vampire, the Domitor in question. That before the ghoul went into their slumber for the night. The day, I should say. They ordered the seagull to like, track them down and it located them to this park where a transaction of money and, you know, changing things over or not. Or maybe the whole weed dealer thing is a facade, a masquerade, if you would, for something else more viable. Now, I would roll up some oracle tables usually to determine what that is, but quite frankly, I don't care. This person is going to suffer, so we're going to roll for the fifth time. Okay, so we got two. So we're back on Grabby. Uh, let's see. So, again, we're going to wait till they eat something. So clearly they're going to make another attempt at buying the ice cream. What with the person in the ice cream truck's like, yeah, do you want another one? Sure. So, let's roll. Oh, we've got to do the audacity thing first. Uh, no, we'll do that first. We'll do the Grabby thing first. We've got a free or lower. So, again, free or lower with a Grabby point. We managed to take uh, this ice cone away from them. And eat that as well. Not wanting to take a shit in it this time. Because we just want to eat the food. So, let's just go back to our spent audacity. If you deplete one of your stats completely, cross out that stat completely and re-roll if you get its number. Right, so we do not have audacity anymore. Right, so I'm guessing that we get that we just have to re-roll it. Okay, so. That was the fifth time. Uh, so we need basically this is the last time that we can roll it for this session until basically the game's finished One beefy again Ch you know what I'm at because we've had like The same three on rotation. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and roll that again Six okay if you roll a six which has no accompanying stats choose one of the win conditions and uh, Choose one of the actions below above whatever okay so basically we've got mean and we've got hungry narratively speaking i don't think it's hungry but then again seagulls do have hunger and it can never be satiated so hmm so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna roll the d6 again one two and three is going to be one and three four five and six is going to be two two is going to be hungry one is going to be mean. So we've got a six, which means two, which means that we are hungry. Which at this point, we're going for the fucking jugular. Looking at them, you notice that one of their garments suspiciously resembles your favorite food. What is it? Write it on the line below, then roll again. So obviously, you're not going to write it down because we can't do that here because I haven't printed it out. Nor can I physically draw on the PDF itself. So, as I said, I'm just going to, you know retcon that a little bit we're going for the fucking jugular and we're going to feed on their fucking neck if the dice allows us to we got a three if you score a three or lower this is so lucky i have to say if you score three or lower your beak closes around its target even though it doesn't taste exactly like the gourmet morsel it resembles you tear off a sizable chunk and eat it anyway delectable so what this is um, again, retconning this is not a garment, it's the throw. Obviously, the seagull ghoul um, wants their vampire domitor's blood. It's the only thing that really sustenates them. But, you know, it's a, it's a fucking seagull. And as I said, what's a juggler than just a rather long chip made out of flesh? Um, and this is probably where things get a bit more horrific, where there's more cameras and whatnot. Um, maybe the ice cream fan's beginning to drive away. Obviously, the fucking guy is bleeding the neck out mortal he's not going to be able to recover from that and i'm actually going to say that this seagull here has fucking killed the weed dealer and uh, we have an optional rule um where we can have a grudge where you, you live on in your bloodline until the last goal fights but this is more of a scenario thing if you're playing with other people and like you have like descendants and whatnot but um yeah, that is a really short scenario of much that is good and all that is evil. Uh, a, a solo journaling game where you play as a seagull. 
And um, it says that it goes on for an hour, but as I'm kind of like going through the motions here, it's taken like, like some 20 minutes now. And I hope that this has been somewhat interesting to you. And um, with the vampire connections in there, it's been somewhat entertaining. Again, if this sounds really interesting to you, I'm going to leave a link to the description below uh, so you can um, download it from their Patreon page. I'm also going to include a bunch of other seagull-themed games for you to try out, one of which actually has you play with fucking seagulls. I'm not kidding. You can go and find out which one that is. You can also um, check out the various other homebrew things that I've written for Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition, as well as all the various social media places. You can find out all the things I'm getting up to and when we will upload various episodes and whatnot. And um, as I'm completely fucking up this outro, until next time, farewell.